Hi, this is Brittany with Good Good Wood. I make epoxy tables. Today I'm going to show you from start to finish how I made this table. First I find the wood and decide on the size of table that I'm wanting. Here I'm making the mold. I like to use OSB board and packing tape. It's nice and cost effective. Epoxy will bond to any type of wood, but not to tape. Make sure you tape up all of the OSB, including the sides, so this will not happen. I then build the mold to size. Sometimes I measure by placing the wood inside and building around it. Other times I just measure the dimensions of the size that I want. I make the mold a couple inches larger than the final dimensions of the table, so when I cut some off at the end, I will end up with the dimensions that I want. To make it easiest to create a mold, I like to clamp all the sides down, flip it over, drill the holes in first, and then screw in the construction screws. Prepping the slabs is very important to making an epoxy table. I seal the edges of the slabs using epoxy, and once it is dry, I will sand up the edges. By sealing the edges, this limits the amount of bubbles the edges give off into the epoxy river. By sanding the edges, this allows the epoxy to bond with itself. When choosing a color for your river, think about doing a test with water to decide if you like the color. I use liquid glass epoxy, which is a deep pour two-par epoxy. A trick that I learned from my friend at Blacktail Studios is after stirring the epoxy, let it sit for 5-10 to 10 minutes, allowing the bubbles to rise. Pop the bubbles with a heat gun and then pour. Experiment with your design. The design that you make will go away until the epoxy has gotten thick enough to hold the design. Continue to come back every hour or sooner to redo the design until it is too thick to design. Wood glass cures in three days, but I wait seven days to take it out of its mold. I then take it up to Creative Woodworks in Portland, Oregon, where I run my table in their wide belt sander slash planer. The sanding process takes a long time, but it makes all the difference. I sand with 100, 120, 150, 180, 220, and 320. On the back, I sand up to 150. When sanding epoxy, you want to make sure not to have any noticeable pinwheel spiral scratches as you go up in grit. If you leave them, they will become more noticeable as you finish. For finish, I really like using Osmo products. I paint on Osmo 1101. This is a thin oil that penetrates the wood and epoxy, helping it to be more water and heat resistant. I brush on the back and then let it sit for 10 minutes, wipe off the extra and flip and do the same on the front. I wait 24 hours and buff on Osmo 3043. No need to sand in between 1101 and 3043. I will link the buffer that I am using in the description. I had to adjust this buffer to hold the white buffing pad with Velcro. After about 10 minutes or so of buffing, I flip the white pad and continue buffing until there are no streaks. Osmo recommends two coats of Osmo 3043 for protection. The more coats you do, the shinier it will be. In between coats, sand between 600 and 1000 grit. The higher the grit, the shinier. I did 600 grit on this table and two coats. Here's a few pictures of what the tabletop looked like after the second coat of Osmo. I bought these legs off of Etsy. They are great quality steel and powder coated black. When putting on the legs, measure exactly where you would like them. Mark it, drill with a skinny bit, and then use a brad point bit to drill into the wood. I use threaded inserts and screws. Try to avoid drilling into the epoxy, but if you have to, just be careful. That was a really quick start to finish on how I made my epoxy coffee table. Thank you so much for watching. This table is for sale and I will link my website and other social medias in the description. I also do custom tables so feel free and reach out to me on my website and message me with the table of your dreams that you would like me to make you.
Please ask me any and all questions. I will reply to every comment.